So our journey has been a little bit different from the most people as far as getting pregnant. So we knew right away um, a lot of uh, medical interventions in that sense. It was a four year journey for us. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I think that's our crib actually. <laughs> It's been great. I think I was a little bit more like hesitant and wanted to wait to make sure everything was going perfect um, before I started to enjoy it. And then lo and behold, Corona happened. <laughs> call that my husband can no longer attend any prenatal appointments. For all my other appointments, they basically have canceled them and they say, if, if you have an issue, you know, we can do a telehealth. I don't know what the next week will look like. Um, daily, I'm kind of checking, like, is the hospital going to be overwhelmed? Is my husband going to be allowed to attend the birth? This is a completely new experience for us in obstetrics. I think in the thick of everything that's going on right now, women are coming in more anxious. I think more anxious than the normal of unknown of what labor brings. My name is Bree and I am a labor and delivery nurse. It's an emotional roller coaster. Um, I go, I, I kind of teeter tot on being a nurse, which is what I've always done first and foremost. But at the other hand, I want to be a patient. I have to remember I'm becoming a mom and I need to protect my unborn child and not risk exposing my family as well and making sure that I'm not overexposing myself with that risk. So it's definitely a emotional roller coaster. A lot of anxiety has been coming up about how I feel about everything. We, we all tend to have a fair number of patients who are anxious anyway, and this has just put people over the edge. So I spend a lot of time during the day um, trying to calm people down and trying to I guess give them perspective, which is really the only thing I have to give right now. People are worried. They're worried about themselves. They're worried about their babies. They're also worried about their elderly parents. Um, they're worried about the economy. People are worried about everything. This is like across the board stress in many different areas. Both my husband and I are still working from home um, and we have a two-year-old who we were also thought it would be a good time to start potty training <laughs> and it's been hard. Fortunately, I was able to do my 12-week ultrasound, but essentially for all my other appointments, they basically have canceled them and they say, if, if you have an issue, you know, we can do a telehealth, that would be the first option. And then otherwise they'd rather just, you know, push them out. And so I'm hoping I can go in for the 20-week ultrasound. Your typical prenatal appointments have changed. A lot of them have changed to video appointments if they're able to do so. Um, your significant other cannot attend any of these appointments if you do have to go in. Neither can your family or child. They're not supposed to go in with you. Um, ultrasounds, only if they're absolutely necessary do you get them. And once again, your significant other cannot come with you. For patients who don't have essential visits, uh, where there are time-sensitive things that need to be done, we're asking them to get a blood pressure cuff, weigh themselves at home, and then we chat uh, via video visits. It's actually, I think it's one of the good things that will come out of this crisis is that we will learn to be more efficient with delivering advice and consultation for patients who don't need to be examined in the office. So I think it's reassuring for patients to have contact um, and yet to not have to come out in, into the public and expose themselves. So I'm, I'm 39 weeks pregnant um, with number three, and I have a six, a six year old and a nine year old. I don't know what the next week will look like. Um, daily, I'm kind of checking, like, is the hospital going to be overwhelmed? Is my husband going to be allowed to attend the birth? It's critical for us as providers to have that additional support and um, interaction in the labor suite with moms. So I, I don't think there's any doubt that it is an absolutely essential part of our care that we provide. Big bump, <laughs> ready to go. 
how do you tell your partner that I'm, I love you, but I'm so sorry. I prefer <laughs> someone else in the delivery room with me for the birth of your first child. Definitely uh, would love to be there, uh, but I feel like practically speaking, if we have to choose one of us, uh, it probably makes more sense for the doula, for Jen, because she's actually like medically trained. It's kind of like having your best friend there with you who also knows all the ins and outs of labor and birth. It's breaking our hearts um, across the doula community and all the midwives right now. Having couples to make that decision is uh, not something that we even were considering a few weeks ago. Maybe Alex will come to the hospital with, with me and Jen will be like on WhatsApp or on like a video on Zoom on something. Yeah, it's gonna be um, a virtual birth <laughs> in some way. My biggest thing was being able to have my family with me. Um, that was a huge thing because um, like I said, we it's been a it's been a journey for us to get to this point and to have a baby in general. We wanted to be able to share every experience that most normal couples get to have when they're having a baby, and I feel like it's been taken away. I always encourage my patients to welcome the help from their family, welcome people wanting to come help them as far as making food for them, coming to clean for them, and having them in the house to give you that extra time to recover. I'm not gonna be able to have that. It's hard. It's been hard to not see my mom and my dad and being like, oh, look at my belly today. Like, I haven't been able to see them. Um, so that's difficult. Uh, I don't know if it's a reality yet for them that they won't be able to be around as much as we all have planned to be, depending on what's going on at the time. I, my due date's not until June 4th, so I still have some time and hoping and crossing my fingers that something changes, but We'll see. We are um, hopeful my in-laws um, would be able to stay with my kids for birth. I actually stopped working just a few weeks ago and then have am trying to also homeschool, which I have never done before. <laughs> um, and I really have a lot of respect for teachers now. I don't know how we're all going to adjust to having a newborn home where I'm not going to be able to be around this much. I'm not going to be able to be feeding people all day. And I'm not going to be able to um, help with homework and Zoom calls and stuff like that. I'm scary. I'm very worried about catching something from the hospital. I'm kind of just daily looking at like, well, how are the cases shaping up? And when is this surge going to happen? And is it going to be when I'm trying to get there too? And I know there's really an effort to get women um, in and out of the hospital quickly uh, so that they're not, after they've given birth, they're not, not staying. Obviously, you know, no one really wants to catch this. I know that I'm younger, um, so that's a plus being in my mid thirties, but I, you just don't know how it's going to affect you. And especially being pregnant, like um, the one nurse said, you are immunocompromised. You just don't know what the effects of that could be. Sure that they say that the baby's okay, but like, what if you're not okay, you know? <laughs> It's just one of those things where you got to have faith that, you know, um, the system that she works in and just, again, knowing her herself, she's going to take the necessary precautions to protect herself while still, you know, being there for the patient uh, best she can. But she's not going to put herself in a position um, where, you know, things can go south. The question of when we do start to see some COVID positive moms in labor, what happens with the baby? And there are different practices all over the country in different areas. The CDC has some specific recommendations and I'm just trying to learn about those now. The practice of separating babies from their moms for 14 days uh, is, a, is one approach. So I think as the time passes and we get more information, we'll have a better handle on what the best way to protect babies and to keep uh, moms and babies together will be. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think that I would tell people not to think about having a baby right now. I think um, in nine months, certainly, we're going to have a lot more information. We will have passed the first wave of this and potentially we'll be closer to getting a vaccine. This will pass. We will get through this and um, we'll come out the other end. We'll have a lot more knowledge and we'll have new experiences that will make things in some ways better. 
So far, she's good. She's really active, so it makes it calms my nerves in that sense because she is super active. I, she's she is her father's child. It's been awesome. Like. Um just excited. Like I find myself noticing little things or getting excited when I see like little things that I can't wait to do with my daughter. Um, there's certain like little songs that I'll that, that I'll listen to that I'm excited to, you know, uh, play for her and stuff like that. So I'm just really excited about you know uh, becoming a father.